Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for joining me today um, for this relatively short webinar about the wonders of the spinning top. Um, just a quick disclaimer, the, this uh, webinar is for educational purposes only. Um, I'm not going to give any advice, uh, any trading advice or, or signals and everything here is only for education and um and uh, let's start so uh, just a one or two words about myself i joined uh, the fivers last month um i've been trading since 2008 started with forex but uh, trading also other uh, financial instruments and markets um mostly technically and uh, in today's webinar we'll review what i think is a, a very nice setup or signal for um that, that gives um let's say a hint uh, about what the market is going to do and it's mostly in the uh, long term or, or uh, high time frames uh, but it uh, doesn't mean that you can't find it in, in lower time frames as well. We'll see some examples, including some very recent and amazing examples. Um, so four short parts of this webinar, we'll discuss the spinning top candle itself. Uh, we'll talk about references to, to see where the spinning top uh, candle is uh, found because it's not uh, relevant just anywhere. It's mostly relevant uh, when the deviation is uh, large or where it's uh, adjacent to moving averages or around a supply demand or support and resistance zones. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to trade it and we'll see uh, an example, a recent example with the pound dollar. And of course, we'll talk a little bit about risk management and trading mentality at the end. So let's start. Um, and again, as I've mentioned, this is not uh, like a, a magic uh, entry signal. When you spot it, you immediately enter. And most of the examples you will see here are on the daily, weekly, and monthly charts. But it's definitely... Um, Applicable for any time frame. It's just that on the higher time frame, it works really, really nicely. Um, it's applicable to all uh, markets. So I'll show you some examples also from commodities and cryptocurrencies. Um, as I said, uh, we will add some reference points, which will increase the validity of the of, of the pattern of the signal. Or, or the candle, and um, it really gives you uh, the opportunity to recognize ahead of time where the market could be going. Um, mostly, mostly for reversals, like major reversals after a long trend, but sometimes it's like a minor reversal within a trend. So like after a correction, it can signal trend continuation. It definitely gives you an edge over the market, which means uh, it can tell you, if you're in a position, it can tell you, listen, maybe you should close a position or at least uh, move your stop loss closer to protect your profits. Uh, it can give you um, a hint to enter the other way and, and, and of course, to take the other direction of the market after some confirmations or in lower time frames, but again, it requires patience because definitely we're not going to trade the the weekly or the monthly charts, um, maybe not even the daily, but in lower time frames you can start looking for places to enter. Patience is a virtue, especially in trading, um, and with the spinning top you will need patience, but it pays and it pays big time. Um, I will give you maybe also an example or talk about 
some things I've seen in the last week or two from, from our traders um, that eventually, you know, uh, managed to take uh, very, very big gains, but because they weren't patient, uh, you know, they, they had some losses before these big gains and with patience, they could have avoided these losses. So let's start with uh, the, the candle, the pattern itself. The spinning top candle, definition from Wikipedia, uh, it's a candlestick pattern that has a short real body, okay? It's, it's short, it's not a line, it's not like a, a, like a dodgy, a doji candle with a, like a long-legged uh, doji candle. It's, it has some sort of a body, okay? That's why it's called the spinning top and not just a simple doji. Um, and the, the body is vertically centered between long upper and lower shadows. And the, the keywords here are centered. So it's not at the bottom, it's not at the top, it's in the middle of the, like in between the wicks and the wicks are pretty much the same size and they're usually long, okay? We're not talking about short wicks, we're talking about long wicks. The candlestick pattern represents indecision about the future direction of the asset. It means that neither buyers nor sellers could gain the upper hand. But again, as we'll see, usually when it comes in uh, with at specific setups, it definitely shows you or can tell you where the market is headed or who's going to have the upper hand, the buyers or the sellers. And we'll see plenty of examples, including uh, examples from this week. Uh, the spinning top candle can appear anywhere on the chart um, and on any time frame, as I've mentioned, but the pattern is mostly meaningful when it appears as part of long trends. And I said at their potential end, because when, when the trend is there, we don't know that it has ended or that, or it's about to end, but when you see a very long trend, usually at the end also with big candles, like there's strong momentum and then this candle appears, usually this candle has a very significant meaning. So don't look at this candle anywhere, uh, but usually after long trends, we'll see examples, um, or, and of course, around supply and demand zones or support and resistance lines. And I've also uh, added here examples of other reference points, such as moving averages. Maybe it can also be uh, Bollinger Bands, but in this case, I'm using moving averages. Either when the spinning top candle appears far away from the moving averages or adjacent, like on top of the moving averages. If it's not too far away and not uh, adjacent, then probably doesn't mean anything, or it doesn't necessarily mean something, again, unless it's in a supplier demand zone. Um, but if it's very far from the moving average, which means that uh, there's a, a big um, um, divergence or a big, um, like uh, th that the price has gone uh, way too far with, with its um, statistic, with its, um, sorry, I forgot the word now, then, then it usually means that we're expecting some retracement. Um, it was st standard deviation, that was uh, what I was uh, looking for. So if, if we have like, I don't know, one, two or three standard deviations away from the, from the price, then usually it means a retracement is due. And uh, if the spinning top is uh, deviated long way from the price, then it, it is stronger. And again, the longer the wicks, the stronger the candle uh, and it's following reaction. So don't look at small bodies with small wicks, but long wicks and the longer, the better. Let's look at a few examples. So you can see here, let me just uh, turn on the mouse. Okay, you can see here, the, uh, this spinning top after a long run, you see this is a, a weekly chart, okay? 
Um, this is from a long time ago. Uh, as I mentioned, I started trading in 2008, and this this I've noticed this pattern already back then in 2008, just before the end of 2008. Look at this spinning top on the weekly chart, and look at this huge candle right after it. Um, the trend didn't go uh, straight down afterwards, but it definitely went uh, down quite a lot. Um, uh, in the following weeks, uh, but this was the, the initial signal after a very long run uh, with big uh, bullish candles. Here too, you can see the spinning top, not so long uh, wicks, but again, it's the weekly uh, candle, so it's, it's still not too small, and it's within uh, or right below the supply zone. So this is another significant thing. Here too, you can see hesitation candles above the, the demand zone, but these are not classic spinning top candles. Here too, you can see sort of small spinning top candles, but again, relatively small. Um, this is definite, this one is definitely, and I, I, I show you this because I always kept this pattern in mind with the specific example of the Euro pound. Um, so this is classic. Uh, another example, huge wicks. Look at this small body and this huge wicks right at the bottom of a very long move. This one is a monthly chart. Okay, huge move down, very strong, and then very, very big wicks and a confirmation candle. It does it. The, we had a, a, a move up, okay, of about, I don't know, 3,000 uh, points or pips. Uh, uh, afterwards, but then again, uh, it continued going down and went up again. So it was already a, uh, a hint for what's to come next. And you can see that at the bottom of this uh, spinning top, the bottom of the candle was the area of demand after which the buyers came when the price um, condensed or, or compressed into the, the bottom of the demand zone uh, that the spinning top candle formed. So again, um, as I said, it gives you an edge. It doesn't mean you trade it. Obviously you don't trade the monthly candles, but it gives you an edge. It tells you where the market could move in the following days, weeks, or months, sometimes even years. Um, Here's another uh, example of the Euro dollar monthly chart. Again, strong moves, spinning top candle, spinning top candle here after long moves. Another uh, move here. This one is not a very uh, long move, but again, it gives you some uh, hint about where the uh, where it could go. And um, and you see this the strong candle confirmation candle afterwards. And again, we'll talk about how to trade um, these patterns uh, from the lower time frames afterwards uh, with a specific example. So this is just a quick overview of the spinning top um, pattern or candle. Now let's, let's talk about uh, the second part is about references. As I've mentioned, um, two possible references, moving averages, and of course, supply and demand or support and resistance uh, zones. Let's start with the moving average, moving averages. So uh, moving averages can serve as context for the spinning top to have a potential meaning or a potential reaction because not every spinning candle or spinning top candle is relevant when you uh, identify it on the chart. Um, what I'm using uh, usually on my charts, and uh, I've mentioned it in the previous in my previous uh, webinar, is um, moving averages, three moving averages, mostly exponential, the 9, 29, 21, and 50. Some use 10 and 20 or 9 and 20 and, and 50. Some even add 100. Um, and when the spinning top appears after a long, strong trend, 
and runs away from the moving averages, which usually serve as uh, dynamic support or dynamic resistance. And we have a strong um, divergence or a strong um, runaway from the price, then a deviation, then we uh, usually expect, can, uh, expect a mean reversion uh, that the price will come back to, to its mean, to its average. Um, and then with the spinning top, it's, uh, it's even stronger. So uh, when the spinning top appears far away from the moving averages, it usually signals the end of the trend. And we'll see some examples in a minute. When the spinning top appears in adjacency to the moving averages after what appears to be a corrective move, then it usually signals a reversal for continuation. Um, here's a relatively recent example. This is the gold futures. It's the same on uh, the XAU uh, dollar. A spinning top after a strong move up, okay? The monthly chart, a strong, very strong bullish move up uh, that's been going on for almost two years on, on gold. And then the spinning top, see how far away it is from the moving averages. The first moving average is the nine EMA. Okay, you can see how the nine EMA uh, serves as sort of support, but then the price runs away from it and forms a spinning top. I can tell you that when I saw this spinning top, uh, I started uh, shorting uh, in, in the futures market. I start started shorting uh, gold, but I also, sold my uh, gold stocks, the, the gold mining stocks that I had, because I realized that after such a big spinning top candle, far away from the moving averages, gold was going down. And I had some gold mining stocks uh, that I was holding in my portfolio, my long-term portfolio, my invest per investment portfolio, and I just sold them. And, um, uh, yeah, I, I've made some money. I, I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't trade it a lot. I was working uh, at investing.com at the time, very busy there. Uh, but um, still, took uh, some shorts on the uh, uh, futures in the futures market and just got, got rid of uh, my gold uh, stocks and gold mining stocks. And and that's what I said about having an edge over the market, even if you don't trade it, but avoid buying there or or entering at, a, at this bad point or even selling your gold mining stocks just before they go down because you see this pattern even this uh, um, is is a nice edge uh, Edward is asking would you say the spinning tops only have significance on the higher time frames so yes as I've mentioned at the beginning of the webinar I'm mostly focusing on the long time frames because that's where the spinning tops uh, are the most significant. They have time uh, to, um, to give long moves, but they're relevant also with these patterns, you know, with the, with the long runs and the spinning top at the end. They're also relevant on short time frames. It's just that for some reason, maybe I've missed, maybe I didn't notice uh, the, the right uh, setups, but for some reason, I see these spinning top patterns mostly on long time frames. Uh, and I, I love short time frames as well. Uh, the, the H4, H1, even two-minute charts. When I traded uh, futures, I used to use uh, the, the two-minute charts. I didn't notice this pattern, um, uh, this pattern so much. But again, maybe I just wasn't aware of it on the shorter time frames. Um, and you say five candles. Prior. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, the question uh, that uh, Hartmut is asking is about this candle, the green one, which is uh, sort of a spinning top, somewhere in between a spinning top and a, and a doji candle because the body is very small. Um, as I said, if it's adjacent to the moving averages, I will, I will refer to it only if, it's, if it comes after a corrective move. So I will show you an example with, uh, with Bitcoin in a minute, but here it doesn't have much significance 
because the, there was no correction and it's not far away from the moving averages. So I didn't uh, give much significance to this specific uh, candle here. Uh, on the third week after the reversal, where it went back up and rejected the open, you would enter stop slightly above the high. So here, again, uh, I don't know if you're referring, Chris, to, um, to this chart, but here it's a monthly chart. I don't trade the monthly chart. I just start looking for uh, the opportunities uh, on the lower time frames, and I will show you an example, an elaborate example on how to trade this pattern. Um, or how to start looking for entries and exit after you. Uh, and that's the, the great thing about this, uh, the, this uh, technique or this pattern that it gives you a lot of time to get ready, but it requires patience. But patience definitely pays with this, uh, uh, with this pattern. Look at the Bitcoin. Um, when you look at it from a, in a, a log chart, logarithmic chart, it doesn't look this imminent or this uh, 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 impressive, but on a regular chart, it definitely looks impressive. Look at the spinning top. And I, you know, I told my colleagues at the time that with such a huge spinning top, it's uh, definitely uh, the Bitcoin is going to go down. And um, it went down immediately. I mean, it didn't even wait for a few more uh, months. This is again, a monthly chart. It's amazing how it dropped from 65 at the top to 30 at the bottom. Within, within a month and a bit, it, it dropped from its peak by more than 50%. Okay. Um, so yeah, th this chart, I mean, looking at the, watching the, the cryptocurrency charts is always uh, mind blowing, but after it went down, uh, also look, or, or uh, sorry, uh, before it went down, um, here's another nice example of the spinning top here at, uh, as, a, as a continuation pattern. And this is what I mentioned earlier. If you see a move and then a retracement, and then you get the spinning top adjacent to the moving average, which serves as a uh, dynamic support in this case, then it can uh, give you a hint as to the uh, reversal or the, the trend continuation. Okay, so this is like a minor reversal after you have a retracement back to the moving averages and the spinning top is sitting on top of the moving average. If you want to wait, you can still wait for a confirmation candle. But again, uh, this is a weekly chart. So you, anyways, you have to go down to the lower time frames and start looking for the entry, but it gives you an indication of what, what to start looking for in this case, uh, start looking for an, a, a long uh, a move up. Um, another example, uh, sorry, another question from Benjamin referring to the spinning top in the previous question. Um, would it be wise to trade it for continuation? Ah, uh, if you're referring, uh, so again, if you're referring to this one, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a continuation candle so much because it's uh, because there was no real retracement here. I mean, it's on a monthly, yes, there was maybe some retracement, but I would look for a real retracement here. It doesn't look like, like a, a corrective move, not really. Here, by the way, maybe I should have circled it, this, uh, this sort of spinning top, it's a small one because you see the wicks are not very big, but it's still a small spinning top. This one is more of a continuation pattern. You have a corrective move, the spinning top, a small one on the moving average, in this case, the 21 moving average, and then even a confirmation candle, and you have a move up. Uh, again, this is the monthly chart, so you have plenty of time to start looking for long, for buy positions uh, after this candle. Um, another example here, the, the pound dollar on the weekly chart again. So you can see a long move on the left side, a long move, a spinning top and uh, a move down. The, the trend doesn't immediately go down. And you can see that it was sort of a hint before forming a double top and then 
moving uh, dramatically down. Uh, you can see an example on the very most left uh, uh, of a sort of a spinning top after a corrective move. But again, it's not a classic one. A few more spinning tops here or, or indecision candles. So you have a move down, a corrective move to the moving averages, a, a spinning top here and continuation down. You have here some sort of a spinning top. The ones that I've circled with, with the dashed circles are the ones that are not so strong or not the classical ones. But again, you can see here a spinning top coming back to, to a, a small uh, supply zone. Uh, here, a, a spinning top on top of a demand zone. Okay. Um, here are some indecision candles, but you know, not in the middle of, of, of anything really, okay, maybe a small corrective move and a move up, but not, again, that's why I, I'm looking for the really classical ones after a long move or uh, within big supply and demand zones. Here, by the way, uh, you have a spinning top, which is relatively far away from the moving averages. It comes after a long move. Again, this is the weekly chart. Um, and it's also within this supply zone okay you have here a supply zone let me just draw it here you have this supply zone something like that okay so this is a supply zone and you have this spinning top um, within the supply zone which brings after it uh, a corrective move uh, but it you know it found support around here, the moving averages and the previous resistance, which was broken up. So it didn't continue much longer. Um, okay. So that was the first reference. Uh, either after a long run, a long move up or down and far away from the moving averages, this means usually a reversal or if you have a corrective move back to the moving averages and then it finds support or, or resistance there before continuing to um, with a trend. Um, the second uh, option, if you don't like moving averages or, or you wanna have something on top of moving averages, but it, obviously this is even a stronger reference is of course the supply and demand zones or if you have a, a local support or resistance uh, area or support or resistance lines. So what we're looking for here is for the spinning top to appear inside or next to or on top of or below the supply and demand zones. And uh, the spinning top itself it serves as um, price action for the supply and demand. Of course, the bigger or the wider the zone and the higher time frame the zone is, um, the longer it may take for the price action or the price uh, to turn. And of course, um, for the pattern to complete. And also, um, sometimes it will, it will take a longer time, you know, uh, for accumulated accumulation or distribution in the zones before the, uh, the move to the other side. Uh, but again, these, these are very strong and very rewarding. Uh, does the market create the patterns so traders can push the price or is it just a case of buyers and sellers fighting until the candle closes? Um, so that's always, you know, Chris, that's a good question. And I've always wondered if these technical patterns that work so beautifully, if it's like, I mean, do people somehow create it to signal everyone that this is what's going to happen or, or that, you know, it's, or is it just because some, somehow it happens and then everyone sees it and then the price moves? I think basically when buyers and sellers are, we call it fighting, but um, yeah, and also uh, obviously algo, algorithms see patterns and, and levels and act uh, accordingly. But I think um, it's not just about buyers and sellers fighting. It's 
I remind you, like I said, if it comes within the zone or next to the zone, it's usually around areas of accumulation or distribution. So it's not really fighting, maybe even cooperating. Some are buying, some are selling, buying, selling, buying, selling. And eventually what happens is you have an indecision area, but it's maybe you can call it indecision, but maybe you can call it a decision to accumulate or a decision to distribute in these zones. And eventually once the big you know, institution, institutionals and, and, and the big traders uh, finish distributing or finish accumulating, then the, the, the price moves in the direction they, they want. Um, for example, look, let's look at the uh, Aussie N monthly chart. You can see this huge uh, supply zone. Um, and when the price went back to the supply zone and formed this spinning top, it's somewhere between spinning top and doji. Look at this huge move down. Uh, absolutely amazing. This is during the 2008 crisis. Okay, everyone, everything went down, uh, commodity prices and housing prices, of course, and, and the dollar went, uh, became very strong. And look at this huge move down after this uh, signal from the market. You can actually see even before this uh, red spinning top or red doji, you can see already um, some sort of another spinning top the green one. Um, and I wouldn't say Doji is significantly, significantly less indicative uh, than a spinning top, but you know, it's, it's just, I, I think they're pretty much similar, but I think the spinning top, um, uh, you know what, it, in places like this with a huge, with, with a huge supply or huge demand and with um, uh, on a monthly or a weekly chart, I would give uh, I, I would give um, importance or, or I would notice either um, the doji or the spinning top the same, but the spinning top is very strong. So this is why I'm referring specifically to, to the spinning top, even more than the doji. Um, you can see here this demand zone, which was respected several times. And again, a spinning top, even a few of them. Uh, this is accumulation, okay, the monthly chart. So you can see how the price came back to the demand zone, accumulation, accumulation for several weeks, okay, three, three months or so, accumulation, and then continued up. Um, you can see here, by the way, a small, not a classic spinning top, but again, an indecision candle on top of um, a reversal area that was previously uh, resistance and then came back to test it as support with this uh, candle sort of spinning top. Um, and yes, and the webinar, uh, is uh, recorded and will go live on the, or go online on, on our YouTube channel. Um, another example from uh, crude oil, this one is uh, H1. Okay, so hourly chart, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, monthly or weekly. Uh, but again, obviously the moves here are much shorter, but again, for, for uh, day traders or scalpers, whatever it can, be good enough. So you can see here a nice move up, uh, a spinning top or, or a doji candle and then a move down. You can see here a very nice um, move back to the demand zone, okay? Uh, and spinning top and a, and a few in, in pin bars and you can see all the candle wicks showing how the buyers are coming in and it's on top of the demand zone. So it gives you a nice opportunity to take, and even a, a, a double bottom gives you an opportunity to, um, to go long. Uh, the moving averages I was using uh, were nine, 21 and 50 uh, exponential. Uh, Satish, can you please explain how to draw supply and demand zone? Yes, so very quickly, uh, how do I draw or how do I decide 
where to draw the supply and demand zone. So if I have two candles, let's look, for example, at these two candles here. I, uh, I look at the, okay, I look at the, the price at the place where the two candles have the same price. And I look at this, the, uh, the place, the closing bodies, and I take the, uh, the, the place where they meet. So in this case, it's here. Okay, the closing body of the green candle meets the, the body of the red candle. And this is for me, the uh, base of the supply here. Okay, so, sorry. So this is uh, the supply zone. Um, let me show you another example. Let's move to the, to the next chart and I'll show you another example. So here, for example, you can see, um, I take the uh, connection, the, the, the place where the two bodies meet, okay? And then the, uh, the opposite point, um, in this case, it's the higher point. If I took, um, for example, here, these bodies, okay? I would, this is where they meet here. And this is the opposite point. So that would be the uh, demand zone here. Uh, in this case, the demand zone is something like this. Okay. And, and supply here, for example, this is the supply zone of these candles. Okay. So I always look for the place where the bodies meet. And the opposite, high or low, is the uh, other. Um, the other side of the supply or demand zone. I hope this is uh, clear. I hope it makes sense. Um, and uh, it, the spinning top doesn't have to be a candle of the opposite direction. It's obviously, it's stronger, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, the, for example, if we have a move up, the spinning top can be green or can be positive or bullish as well. It doesn't have to be red or negative or, or bearish. Okay, if we have a move down, the spinning top doesn't have, doesn't necessarily have to be bullish, but obviously it's a stronger indication if it's of the opposite direction. Um, okay, so here we have the, uh, the pound dollar and we are talking about right now. This is from, this was taken today and this candle here the spinning top candle here is from two weeks ago. Okay, and um, you can see the demand. Sorry, the the supply zone. First of all, you can see on the on the on the left side of the chart, you can see a spinning top candle after a long move, and then a move down again. We saw another example how it doesn't necessarily uh, create the move immediately. Um, but in this case, it, it went down and then up again before a double top and then the big move came. Um, but the, the second move created this big supply zone and we went, came back to the supply zone, um, in the recent weeks. And two weeks ago, we had a nice spinning top, not a very big one, uh, but still a nice spinning top. And we saw the moves um in the you know in the last day a very strong move but the but the move down started even uh, earlier as for uh santosh as for your uh remark about the second spinning top that should have been avoided um as the trend was broken from two previous highs uh I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. The trend was broken from previous two highs. Ah, you mean maybe, okay, I'm not sure uh, what you're referring to. If you're referring to this uh, spinning top candle, again, it's after a long move. Okay, right, uh, coming right into the, sorry, right into the uh, supply zone around here. So it's still uh, valid. Uh, and if I draw a trend line um, from 2018 to 2020, yeah, so if I draw a trend line, obviously if you're referring to I don't know, something like this, then yes, it went uh, 
up, but uh, maybe the trend line is not uh, accurate. But yeah, we have some sort of maybe the trend line came here and then it uh, broke. But you see, it still uh, broke. Uh, it still broke uh, into the trend line again. So um, even if you don't trade the spinning top, even if you don't go short here and and sell, you still say, okay, I have to be careful. I'm not going long here because I have the spinning top. Maybe I should wait for at least you know uh, look for lower time frames and and, and look for a, a better entry or wait for the uh, price to revisit the trend line and see if I have a good entry at the broken trend line uh, that could continue up. In this case, it didn't happen, but still it gives you a warning uh, signal. And uh, like I said, we're not going to trade the higher time frames anyway. We're looking for lower time frames, and we'll see that uh, in a few minutes uh, with, a, with an example. Euro dollar also, this is from now, from, this is a, uh, an updated chart. So you can see here also um, supply zone from the monthly chart or from the weekly chart. Supply, you can see here distribution, a very strong move down, a very long move down. Coming back to the supply zone, um, this is more of a um, shooting star candle. And here, one or even two spinning top candle candles right at this uh, supply zone, even another supply zone, a recent one. Um, we can say we have some sort of a supply zone here, something like that. And uh, then the spinning top candles give us a hint of what uh, is to happen, a double top here and a very strong move down. So let's see how we can trade, uh, how we can trade the pattern. Um, so first of all, once you identify this pattern in a high time frame, uh, you don't take it, you don't take the trade there, you don't trade the monthly or the weekly chart. You switch to the lower time frames and start looking for uh, the signals in the lower time frames. That's why I said you have to be patient. You wait patiently for low risk areas to enter where you can place your stop loss um, more tightly, where you can um, take the, the stop loss or, or set the stop loss without violating any risk management rules, without risking too much of your account um, and without placing the stop loss too far away or too, too close just because um, just because uh, the, the risk is too big. Um, of course, the uh, spinning top candle gives you a direction, okay? If it's at the, the end of, um, of a long run up or in a supply zone, then you're looking to go short, to go uh, to sell. If it's at the end of a very long move down or in a demand zone, you're going to look for entries to buy. So this is the, the direction. And then um, you set this, your stop loss in the lower time frames. It can be an hourly time frame, a four hour time frame, or even daily time frame for those of you who um, trade longer time frames. But your take profit can be even longer because we are talking about long moves. And if you have patience, then while your stop loss is relatively short, relatively small, your take profit can be much longer, which gives you a great risk reward ratio. Um, as for fundamentals, I, again, I usually trade the, um, I trade the fund, uh, technical charts, but if we are talking about fundamentals, then yeah, you, everyone knew that inflation was very strong. We saw the uh, PPI, uh, you know, the uh, purchase um, uh, or production price index and how everything um, like the manufacturing prices are going up, inflation is going up. Obviously, the Fed cannot ignore the rising inflation for much longer. And, and you know, people are expecting that either QE or, you know, the purchasing program will uh, start being tapered at a certain point or even interest rate rising and then the dollar will go up. So, 
you can look at the fundamentals um, and you can see that the euro dollar is within a supply zone, that the pound dollar is in a supply zone, that the Aussie dollar has been moving sideways uh, inside a supply zone on the monthly chart. Uh, so you can add the fundamentals to the technicals. Um, and I agree that you can also look for divergences even on the higher time frames and definitely on the shorter time frames. So pound dollar, the daily chart. Um, here you can see, okay, again, uh, the monthly, the sorry, the weekly chart. Uh, is this chart, okay? We saw the weekly chart of the British pound uh, versus the US dollar. Um, this is the very big supply zone. And now we can see this is where we are at on the weekly chart and this is the daily chart. I can tell you that I've, I've been tracking several traders uh, of the Fivers and they weren't patient, unfortunately, and they were trying to go long and short and long and short on the pound dollar, even though it's been going sideways for about three weeks. And I, unfortunately, people were losing money um, just because they didn't wait patiently for, for the price to, to uh, so, show some decision uh, rather than just uh, moving sideways. and. Um, well, at least one of the traders that uh, unfortunately uh, was losing money, sometimes making money, sometimes losing money. Finally, the, the pound broke down and the um, and uh, this trader made a lot of money. Currently, this trader has on both accounts a profit of about, uh, I think, 10 or $11,000 on each. Uh, of his accounts just from the pound dollar, uh, which is very, very nice. Yeah, he, point, he opened a, a position of 6.7 lots on the pound dollar on each account, and the, the accounts now have a floating equity of uh, around $10,000 uh, on the pound dollar. But un unfortunately, he was losing money all the way, um, well, sometimes making, sometimes losing, just because this pound was moving sideways and it could have been avoided or at least um, uh, managed better. And what we see here in the dashed rectangle is the doji itself. Um, this doji candle, the weekly candle, it, this is how it looks on the daily charts. It goes up, up and down, up and down, up. Eventually it closes as a spinning, sorry, as a spinning top candle, not a doji, a spinning top candle. And now we go down to the four hour chart. Again, this rectangle is uh, how the spinning top candle looks in a lower time frame. So you see the indecision. Um, but once this is complete, once this uh, spinning top candle has been formed, and you say, okay, I have a long move up. I'm with, I'm inside the supply zone. I have a spinning top candle. I should start looking for short position. Now, maybe you can start looking for short, but where are you going to look for a short position or short entry? You're not going to look for a short entry inside a demand zone. You're not going to look for a short entry somewhere in the middle. Look and wait for places where you can have higher chances of success. For example, at the top, okay? You have here sellers coming around here. You have sellers coming around here, coming around here. Here, very strong engulfing candle. So sellers are waiting around this area of around 142, 141.90. This is the zone where you can start looking to go short. If you wanna wait a little bit longer, then wait for the price to start moving down. It has demand here, okay? The demand from this area, this the, the, the blue line below the demand zone is, um, uh, this um, blue line is the weekly demand zone, okay? So we have a weekly demand zone, we have a, a daily or a four hour uh, demand zone. So if you, feel uncomfortable taking short just above the demand zone, wait for it to break. It broke, it retested again, 
and now it gives you an opportunity to go short. Okay, and it went even lower after uh, taking the screenshot earlier today. So this is the four hour chart, which is obviously um, a much lower time frame than the weekly chart. Uh, already a good place to enter. And you can go down to the week to the hourly chart. So you have the resistance area, you have supply zone around here, you have supply zone here. You have even a lower, uh, you know, you have resistance here, you have supply, you have supply. So you have plenty of places to take, go short. Here, actually, I wouldn't go short because it's right uh, above the demand zone, okay? But once the demand zone is broken and consumed and the price is retesting, this is a classic place with a very small risk. But look at the reward, the potential reward. So this is amazing. And you have the hint coming here after breaking or consuming this demand. Zone. So this is what I mean by uh, looking for the opportunities and waiting patiently. Okay, again, the doji, the um, spinning top candle, you see the edge of the spinning top candle here, this red rectangle, this is the end. Uh, you know, the, the, this is on the hourly chart. Okay, this is the four hour chart. This is where the spinning top candle was formed. This is the daily chart. And this is the weekly chart. This is the spinning top candle. So after it, it's been formed, we have one and two weeks, uh, almost two full weeks or to, to, to really give you uh, a very nice profit. But even after, you know, even right after the candle has been formed, you already have opportunities to go short. If you go short here, remember the price doesn't move immediately. So, you know, if you take short here and the price goes all the way down uh, and all the way up, it can be very frustrating. So remember that the price, especially coming from big time frames, from from big demand zones or supply zones on higher time frames. It takes time for the price to move. It's a big ship, okay? The weekly, the monthly chart, it doesn't turn around immediately. So give it time. And if you already have some profit, don't hesitate to take it, okay? Start with like starter positions and take profits on the way until eventually um, it, it gives you the, uh, the, the, you know, the long weighted move. Um, and as for 1 million account traders, no, we unfortunately still don't have 1 million account traders, but uh, some are showing very, very nice trading skills. And I hope we will have someone trading a 1 million account in the coming months. In this business, if you're good, you're right six times out of 10. You're never going to be right nine times out of 10. Uh, definitely not 10 times out of 10, unless maybe you're using a martingale, but in this case, eventually you could blow up your account. So, um, so really don't, don't expect to be right all the time. Take your losses when they come and take your profits, of course, when they come. Uh, think on a series of trades basis. Don't forget, um, and I will... Uh, Pascalis, I will answer that uh, shortly. Uh, don't forget, always use a stop loss. Okay, use the technical levels, see where the price uh, has support or resistance or supply and demand and set the stop loss um, beyond these levels. Be sure to be comfortable with the risk. If you don't feel comfortable with the risk when you open the trade, don't open the trade or close it immediately because if you if you're not comfortable with the risk, you'll start, uh, and, and the market moves against you, you'll start doing things that are bad for your account. You will remove the stop loss. You will move the stop loss eventually, eventually, and I'm talking from bitter experience, you will eventually lose a lot more than you've planned to uh, lose or wanted to lose. So, uh, so just be comfortable with the risk. It, comfortable enough so you can sleep tight at night or that you can turn off your, your computer and, and, and not watch the chart 
um, this is what I mean when I comfortable. That you don't care if uh, the market hits your stop loss, you're good, uh, whatever happens. Remember to think on a series of trades basis. Don't think that each and every trade is the most important trade because like I said, or like Peter Lynch said, six out of 10 times is good enough. Uh, remember to look left, look for the supply and demand zones, look for where the buyers and sellers are waiting. This is your edge. The price is everything it tells you where to look for long or short, be patient. Don't chase the market. There are always opportunities. Uh, just wait for these opportunities. And uh, if you have a spinning top on your weekly or monthly chart, be patient. Let it, you know, evolve. Let the, the price on the lower time frames give you the signals. I've just shown you on the pound dollar from this week how you had plenty of places to go uh, to go in. Uh, when you leave trades overnight or over the weekend, take into account that everything can happen. So again, if you're not comfortable with the risk, just close the trade um, so you can sleep tight or enjoy your weekend. Uh, use a trading journal, aim to improve, to become consistent. Don't try to become rich immediately. It doesn't work this way and focus on the process the money will follow. Um, let me just uh, stop sharing and, and share the, the, the live chart so I can uh, maybe reply, uh, give you some answers. So let me share the chart. And of course, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to ask. So, Basically, a uh, question about the pound dollar, if it's still, uh, if it's still um, good to enter short. So again, if you're looking to enter short on the pound dollar, look for places uh, where you can enter safely. For example, you have here a temporary um, the supply zone. So wait for the chart to, or for the price to come back uh, to this zone, okay? You have supply, or you have even um, another supply here, or you know, if the price comes even um, higher, you can look for places uh, like this. So it's always definitely possible for the price to continue down. And like I said, the um, this is a weekly chart. So, and, we might see here a double top, so it can definitely go all the way down to this area first. Okay, we have here um, the first demand on the weekly chart, and we have another demand here, okay, here on the weekly chart as well. So we have uh, two very uh, adjacent demands. So it can go, you know, from 139.50 or so, to, it can it can go down at least maybe a, a hundred more pips. Um, but don't just enter here, okay? Uh, look for entry places like uh, intermediate uh, demand or supply zones. Um, this is a nice place maybe uh, to take after you know a temporary support and then. A, a long, a strong move. So maybe this is a potential resistance. Uh, if you're using moving averages, then you can see how the nine EMA served as a as a moving average uh, dynamic resistance. If the price comes back up here, you have the twenty one or the twenty moving average that can uh, serve as resistance in addition to this area. So, so this is um, a pullback towards here can can be a, an interesting entry point again, but you know wait for the price to stop here. Jo don't just enter because it could move a little bit higher and just take your stop out or your stop loss. Um, but basically, yeah, the the pound dollar could move even much lower, especially if it's a double top. 
uh, but obviously not immediately. By the way, you can see here that the 20 EMA or 21 EMA, uh, which is sort of, um, let's uh, just clear these. You can see a very nice area around here. Um, this is a nice area. You have resistance, you have support, um, you have potential support from this 21 EMA around here, which is also, uh, like I mentioned, demand. So this is a first place to, or an initial target for short. Uh, and this is an initial target maybe, or, or a nice uh, place maybe to look for long. Um, how much do I risk per trade? People normally say one to 2%, but I watch these financial movies, they usually uh, make. So uh, uh, when you watch, yeah. So usually I don't think risking more than 1% per trade from your entire portfolio is, is smart. I think it's 1% is already a lot, um, but yeah, one to 2%. So that even if you lose, let's say, five trades in a row, which is definitely possible. You don't lose more than five to 10% of your portfolio. You still have plenty of money to continue without affecting your uh, psychology. Um, you try to risk 0.2% per trade and 0.5, I'm very confident lately been trying to flip accounts. That's always, okay. Yeah, Chris, so, Definitely uh, learning from your mistake is uh, smart and, and, but sounds like you know how to manage your risk. Um, and again, don't try to, don't haste, don't try to make a killing out of one or two trades. Maybe you can do it uh, once or twice. In the long run, it doesn't work this way. And your goal is to become consistent so that you can really survive in this market for a long time and know how to make money in this market over and over again, and not just, you know, once or twice. Um, if I can tra uh, suggest a trading journal, well, actually um, a very nice trading journal, which is not, a, not for free, but it's not too expensive. And it's just a one-time payment, I think of around a hundred or a hundred something dollars is the Edgewonk uh, Trading Journal by uh, Trade Society or something like that, uh, Edgewonk. So that's a nice uh, trading journal uh, with lots of features and it can show you like your psychology progress, progress and things like that. Um, yeah, and I'll, let me just uh, write it down for you. Um, so the name is Edge, Edge Wonk, Wonk, something like that, or Edge Wonk. Um, yeah, so I think, well, uh, yeah, just look for Edge Wonk. If I'm not mistaken, this is the, um, how you spell it. Uh, yeah, great. So. Basically, this is it. Um, thank you very much for attending. And again, uh, trade patiently, trade well, manage your risk. Uh, always, you have plenty of opportunities, play, plenty of trading methods, uh, uh, but your edge is your mentality and, um, and you should really, really just be patient and focus on the process, not on the money. Uh, Pascal, so you would like to ask how often you can expect a reliable setup in the majors and crosses. Uh, when, when you're talking about, um, but a setup according to what? According to the spinning top, because spinning top doesn't appear too often. Um, so, and again, it depends where you see the spinning top. If it's on the weekly chart, then obviously not sure you will see it every month or so. Uh, on the daily chart, maybe you can see it. 
and uh, and um, on the yeah on lower time frames, obviously you can see it much more frequently. As for other setups, I mean you have you have other great setups all the time. Uh, I gave a webinar like a month ago on uh, you know setups with supply and demand and moving averages that appears all the time on all time frames. Uh, but yeah, spinning top is relatively, relatively rare. It doesn't happen a lot, but when it happens, it gives you, you know, it gives you uh, great opportunities to, to ride the market. All right, guys, thank you very much. Trade well. Uh, may the uh, God of Pips be with you. And um, I'm happy you learn from these uh, streams, from these webinars. So good luck to all of you. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, you're always welcome to try the free program, the summer plan, and you know, see how you're doing uh, with this challenge. Uh, so this webinar will go live, will, will go on uh, online on our YouTube channel. And uh, glad to hear you passed one, Lucien. Um, so yeah. See you next time. Thank you very much, guys. Take care. Good luck.